of the internet. Today we are going to be doing a K-drama lookbook where I take four iconic K-drama fashion outfits worn by beautiful and powerful and awesome female leads in certain K-dramas. So the first one is going to be one of the main leads from Crash Landing on You and the other one is going to be another main lead from Crash Landing on You and the third one will be from Hotel Del La Luna and the last one will be from My Love from Another Star. So I am super excited. Uh, making this video has been such a big process of just a lot of research and finding duplicates and trying to work um, out some DIY stuff with stuff that I already had in my closet so this was in general a lot of fun to film. I will take you through how to build these outfits step by step and then at the end stay tuned for a cinematic lookbook reveal. I have always found K-drama fashion to be so incredibly just stunning and beautiful because they do use every season's runways of best and top picks and certain classics and they hire some of Korea's best stylists to work on these production and just create these beautiful looks so hopefully um, today I can to these amazing beautiful outfits so justice uh, by trying to style them as close as possible. Before we start, if you want to see more K-drama lookbooks in the future or other fashion videos, please give me a subscribe and a like and hit the notification bell and I would be so honored and just thankful for all of your guys' support because it really does mean the world to me. But now let's get started! Alright, let's break down Dan's look from the scene in Crash Landing on You. First of all, I love the expression on these ladies' faces. It's like jaw-dropping comedic quality. But anyways, she makes her entrance and is wearing a white suit set from Michael Kors, a black bow front blouse, lace heels from I believe Manolo Blahnik, a Spanish designer, and gold earrings and hairpins with this Jimmy Choo black clutch. So let's see how to recreate this. Alright, step one, let's start off with a base layer. Dan wears this beautiful blouse underneath that has a large black bow tie front, so I found this white blouse with a black bow in my closet that's a close proxy from ASOS. Okay, base layer part two. Because my blouse is white and not a perfect match for the black, I found this really old sheer black blouse from Urban Outfitters that layers nicely without adding weight that creates a better color block look this outfit has. It kinda looks weird right now, but trust me, it will look good. Okay, so bottoms. So underneath, I have on some semi-opaque black tights that she wears, which you can get from practically anywhere, but I got mine off of Amazon. And over it, I found this amazing dupe of Dan's Michael Kors white ruffle suit skirt from ASOS that has the perfect slit and ruffle detailing. Okay, now the white blazer. Dan's suit jacket is also from Michael Kors and has ruffles to match the skirt, but I'm subbing for just a regular white blazer from my closet from Zara. And she wears hers buttoned and mine doesn't have one, so I actually pinned the front together and it actually doesn't look all that bad. The blazer really finishes off this super badass look that embodies the character that she is. Okay, now the long black coat that she wears just kind of over her shoulders is so badass. So I actually own this long black coat from Theory and my college roommate used to joke with me and call it my Opa coat because it looks like one of those long coats every K-drama male lead wears. And I've been told also that I look like a senator's wife wearing this. So this coat has been through a lot, but nevertheless, very handy. I am now 4 inches taller. Her heels were probably the hardest to find a dupe for because they are these stunning cream satin pointed toe pumps with lace detailing at the tips. I styled this with a pair of heels that's been in my closet for like 8 years and they are these lace black pumps that kind of have a satin sheen to them. And the only thing that bothers me is the peep toe is a bit round instead of pointed. But hey, we make do when we're not a rich gal from North Korea. I think her real shoes are by Manolo Blahnik and they are known for their satin pumps and a stylist on the set of the dress also used a lot of his shoes in other outfits. To accessorize, she had this beautiful black Jimmy Choo clutch with an emerald green jewel on it for a pop of color. So I found a slight dupe from Amazon, which is a really beautiful handmade black clutch with emerald accent jewels. And her gold earrings were also surprisingly tough to find, but I duped it with some gold drop earrings, added some gold delicate rings, and at last, the iconic hairpin. I feel like hairpins are getting more and more popular in K-drama fashion and coming back in style, so she wears a single jeweled hair pin that's gold, which I copped from Amazon. 
Breaking down Sadie's look, I hope I didn't butcher that because my Korean is non-existent. It was hard to find clips from Crash Landing on You, but this is the outfit she wears in Switzerland. Okay, hot guy intermission, back to her girl. In the scene where she finally reunites with Captain Ree, which consists of this beautiful floral dress, a crystal choker necklace, black clutch from Miu Miu, and nude heels. So let's see how to recreate this. So this outfit is much simpler than the first ordeal, but nevertheless beautiful. We are starting with this floral dress with slightly puffed shoulders and a milkmaid neckline. I think that's what it's called. This is a pretty close dupe from ASOS that gets the neckline and floral print pretty spot on. And I call this my American version of this dress because it is just ever so slightly more dramatic and louder than the one that Sadie wore in the drama. Can I just say, I love this snap transition sound effect. It makes me feel like Thanos. Uh, sorry, I'm just a major Marvel nerd, but anyways, it was really hard to tell what shoes she wore in the shot, but there was one shot where she comes out of the car in that dress and she was seen wearing nude strappy stiletto sandals, similar to the ones that I have here from ASOS that adds a feminine touch and is nicely understated in comparison to the bolder floral print dress. To add finishing touches, she carries this black little purse with a gold buckle detailing from Miu Miu that has a crocodile finish, and I found this close duplicate that has all the features except the crocodile finish, which other than that is pretty darn close. She keeps it pretty simple with the jewelry and wears gold jewel studs and this crystal choker necklace, so I found some similar duplicates from Amazon. Jung Man Woo, I hope I said that right, from Hotel de Luna, played by EU, is so badass in the scene and rocks this purple satin dress with a high slit, 5 inch black stilettos, purple statement jewelry, and a Victorian vintage styled hat and veil combo. Also, I love the narration in the scene as people are like, yo, there's a chick with a gun coming. Totally normal, right? And she looks like a badass goth princess, which I stand. So let's see how to recreate this. First, we got this iconic purple satin dress with a high slit that she wears in this badass scene. I found this duplicate on sale from Nasty Gal, and it's a pretty close one minus the high neckline, which can easily be created with some pins if needed, because this dress has a lot of loose fabric as it is kimono style, but I chose to leave it as is. Next, we got this sheer black veil that pairs with the hat. And one thing I love about the fashion in this drama is that the stylist utilizes a lot of vintage and Victorian elements, such as veils, which is commonly worn by women back then along with their hats. And I got this simple one from Amazon and it kind of looks weird right now. And I kind of look like a goth tooth fairy, but trust me, it will look legit. Now we got the Victorian style floppy hat with a flower detailing that is a very close match to the one from the drama. And see, I told you the veil looks less weird with the hat on. I still think people would think I lost my mind if I wear this out, but nonetheless, loving the vintage throwback in this drama. Bam, five inches taller. I am so tall in these stilettos that I don't even fit into the same camera frame anymore. But anyways, she wears these super badass five inch black patent leather pointed toe stilettos to come and shoot this dude, which is awesome on too many levels and jesus that was six adjectives but these are not hard to find um you can find a dupe anywhere from aldo to amazon and in terms of accessories this outfit doesn't have a bag as she comes in with a jeweled rifle and i think i'm good on not buying a jeweled rifle but in terms of earrings and rings she wears these jewel purple accents so i duped her purple jewel earrings with these purple statement earrings from bobble bar and this victorian gothy cocktail ring that i found on amazon that seems to fit the vibe very well this is from a slightly older drama that has a special place in my heart because it was my first K-drama that I ever watched and this is Chong Song Yi from my Love From Another Star and she is such a funny character but in this wedding scene she is wearing a Dolce & Gabbana lace gown, Jimmy Choo heels, a purple clutch, and a black Balmain blazer not shown directly all while facing off with her rival. So let's see how to recreate this. 
Let's start with remaking her black lace gown from Dolce & Gabbana. So I got a bit creative with this one because I did not want to buy or find a pricey black gown. So I dug this black skirt with a high slit from my closet that was originally a two-piece prom dress that I wore in this charity fashion show when I was in high school. But I used that as my base to build my gown. Next, to create the lace bodice, I actually just used a black lace bandeau and tucked it into the skirt to create basically a lace gown that looks like a one-piece but is actually two. I guess I am quite the master deceptionist, but this actually looks way nicer than I thought it would. The Dolce & Gabbana gown also comes with a blush-colored satin bow belt around the waist, so I actually finessed a satin sash that they probably use for weddings and birthday parties and wrapped it around my waist twice and tied the bow in the front. Now it looks even more like a one-piece ensemble. Freaking mission accomplished. Now the blazer. You can look up the pictures, but in the scene I previewed in the beginning, she has it off, but the drama styled her gown with a black double-breasted blazer from Balmain, which is such a classic, but there are pretty close dupes that you can get from Nasty Gal or Amazon, and she wears it just hung over her shoulders like this, and it is such a great way to make a gown look 10 times more powerful. Okay, the shoes. This is the only item that I own an exact copy of in my own closet to a drama, but these are the Jimmy Choo Able glitter pumps in the color anthracite that I mentioned in my shoe collection video. And not gonna lie, I bought these after I watched this drama about three years ago, and damn, is K-drama marketing good? Because these shoes became a worldwide sensation and went flying off the shelves everywhere. Lastly, to add the accents, she wears these silver crystal raindrop shape earrings. I legit found a somewhat close dupe, except mine is just crystal without any silver detailing. The originals are from a brand called Didlier Du Beau. The clutch she used is a bluish purple velvet color for that pop of color, but since I could not hunt down a purple clutch, I have a sapphire one from Nordstrom's as a dupe and it adds a similar color pop effect. Also, I put my hair up because that's how she wears it in the scene. I thought about doing a makeup and hair tutorial aspect to this lookbook as well, but then when I analyzed their makeup, honestly, they almost look the same because Korean eye makeup is all very natural, and the only thing that kind of shifts are their lipstick colors. Also, no hair because not gonna lie, I suck ass at doing hair. i 
참 행복하다면 그때가 있었었겠죠 Always 잊지 마요 내가 있다면 너를 기다리고 